Of course, uh, the latest development around the global world can already uh, show uh, the uh, uh, complexity of uh, the uh, uh, involvement of the West and other NATO nations uh, in uh, Ukraine. We see uh, how Israel's uh, military actions against uh, uh, Palestine uh, uh, revealed the double standard of, of the West and shifted uh, the, the focus of attention of the uh, mainstream uh, media. In uh, this uh, situation, Ukraine does not receive uh, the uh, attention and unlimited financial support uh, that it was already used to. Has uh, Ukraine's uh, desire to follow the Western agenda prevented the uh, possibility of finding diplomatic solutions with uh, Russia? Of course, here uh, we're answering uh, the question which holds a uh, problematic uh, this day. Uh, uh, I will appreciate if you uh, answer to this question, uh, uh, Dimitri. Yes, indeed. Uh, the uh, situation in Gaza has opened an eyes of uh, a lot of uh, our uh, colleagues uh, on what was happening in Ukraine as well, because they are blatant, they have double standards uh, in the approaches of um, of the West uh, towards the Ukrainian situation and in what's now happening in in Gaza. Uh, there was a new, there was a piece of news, I think several uh, several days ago, from Israel that uh, almost four thousand refugees from from Israel decided to return to Ukraine because they say that it is much safer in Ukraine than in Israel right now. And this absolutely contradicts the whole uh, line of Western propaganda, uh, which tried to present the actions of Russia in Ukraine as targeted against civilians, despite the fact that we repeatedly uh, warned that we are not targeting uh, civilian objects, and that uh, the damage that is being caused to civilian damage uh, to civilian uh, objects is mostly the result of the uh, faulty work of Ukrainian air defense, which is being placed in the residential areas uh, in total breach of international humanitarian law. So uh, it turns out to be that the Ukrainian cities, uh, after, after almost uh, two years of our special military operation, continue to live uh, more or less uh, normal life. If you browse internet, you will see uh, pictures of nightlife in Kiev, in Odessa, in Kharkov. Uh, on, the other fact, on the other hand, you, will, you, you may look at the pictures of Gaza you will see what kind of devastation is is being caused if uh, the uh, if a country is uh, indiscriminately shelling residential areas and uh, residential zones uh, as we were as we were uh, accused of doing so uh, in Ukraine absolutely wrongly uh, and baselessly accused. What's happening in Gaza resembles rather the U.S. tactics in in Mosul or in Raqqa. Uh, which we all remember when the city is almost erased from the surface on the earth. But at the same time, the um, uh, fallout of this, uh, the reaction of this uh, to this from Western media and from Western politicians is very, is very mild, is very modest. So uh, it, it's absolutely clear that uh, the West is uh, analyzing the situation in Ukraine and situation in, uh, uh, in Gaza through the optics of uh, who is the friend uh, and who is the foe of the West. So if Russia is the foe of the West, then of course it can't be a good country, it can't behave in a good way, whatever it does. Uh, and there is a lot of Western propaganda trying to attribute to us things that we never did. In the, on the other hand, if Israel is uh, being presented as the only democracy in the Middle East, it's not my quote, but it's the quote of some American politicians or and, and uh, European politicians. Of course, it's not supposed to be criticized and its methods are not supposed to be criticized. And we see how the West is implementing these blatant uh, double standards. And I think that uh, the West has lost, lost a lot of credibility after the events uh, in Gaza uh, started. Uh, and a lot of people saw their clear parallel uh, with the Ukrainian situation in the, with the way Russia is being uh, treated and accused uh, by the West.